there are many different definitions for quality of service. But when we're talking about networks, we're talking about the way that we would manage or control different types of traffic going through the network. That's because on most Ethernet networks, you simply provide the packets onto the network, and your networking devices make something called a best effort to get that packet to the other side. No packet has a particular priority over another. They're simply flowing through the network in whatever order our networking devices allow it. There's no way to control the traffic. There's no way to prioritize the traffic. And that creates a number of problems. Because today, we've got a lot of different kinds of traffic on our networks. We have the data that we would normally use for surfing networks and going out to the internet and transferring files. But now we also have voice traffic on our network as well. And voice traffic is extremely sensitive to any type of latency or delays as it goes through the network. And on top of that, we also have a lot of video that we're putting on our, our networks. And of course, video has an entirely different group of large bandwidths and a lot of latency sensitive methods, especially when you're doing live video. Well, that creates a problem, of course, because without any way to prioritize the traffic, you could be downloading a file from the internet, and that file download may interrupt a voice communication that you're having with someone else. So you can't have all of your traffic handled the same way. You need to set different or higher priorities for your voice, perhaps have important applications have a higher priority over less important applications, and put you in control of exactly how the traffic flows through the network. As this requirement of managing quality of service and managing priorities of applications has evolved over time, we found different ways to handle this. There's a lot of different methods that are used across a lot of different topologies. And each one of those methods has advantages and disadvantages. For the purposes of your Network Plus, we're going to focus on Ethernet. And there's certain methods that are incorporated within Ethernet that would allow us to configure and set up quality of service. And some of these methods even extend across different topologies like your wide area network connections. And these days, of course, many of your wide area network connections are provided to you over Ethernet. So certainly that implies that you would be able to control different quality of service at a very standard way across all of your different networks. One of those methods is to use something called integrated services, or int-serve. This is one where you are using specialized protocols to be able to send out to resources and reserve a certain amount of bandwidth. So you, like you're making a reservation for a table at a restaurant, you have to send an RSVP packet out to a device. And that packet has to find a table for you. It's a table for four. It has to set it up for you and then tell you that that reservation is available. Well, unfortunately, in networking, that methodology did not work very well because we have a lot of diverse devices. Not all of them use these particular reservation protocols. And so it wasn't one that was widely used. Another method is called diffserve or differentiated services. Diffserve means that you are setting certain bits within your IPv4 header. It's built into TCP IP. And you simply set bits within that header that says this particular packet has a particular priority associated with it. Now that also means that the other devices on your network have to play along or have to understand those bits. Your routers have to take those bits into account. Your switches have to take those bits into account. Your firewalls have to take those bits into account and use them. And unfortunately, you have the same scenario where not all devices will respect those diff serve bits. And so that particular method, perhaps not as widespread as we would like to see either. Because of the challenges associated with integrated services and differentiated services, we're usually employing other methods to be able to control and manage the priority of traffic as it goes through the network. Usually, we're purchasing a device and simply sending all of our traffic through that device. So it's a specialized quality of service piece of hardware. It may also be integrated into your routers or into your firewalls, in some cases, even into IPS systems. There are three different methods that are usually employed to be able to provide this type of bandwidth control. One of those is traffic shaping. You may also hear this referred to as rate limiting. We've configured our quality of service device to take all of the traffic in, but only allow your video traffic to have a certain amount of the bandwidth, and perhaps give your voice communication a higher amount of bandwidth. That way, you can go to YouTube and you can watch videos as much as you would like, but they're never going to overload your network so that your voice communication doesn't work properly. That's one common way to make sure that you're limiting or carving out different amounts of bandwidth for the different types of applications that you're using. 
Another method is called scheduling algorithms. This is one where we configure a device so that everybody perhaps is getting the same amount of bandwidth. But what we're going to do is queue things up so that voice communication gets extra packets sent over video communication. Usually this requires that you have certain buffers in place so that you're able to slow your video traffic as you're able to allow the voice traffic to continue on its way. It's a little bit more complicated than using rate limiting or traffic shaping but at least you're able to use all of your bandwidth regardless of the type of applications that you're using. Another method of controlling prioritization of traffic that's a little bit less intelligent than doing any type of traffic shaping or any type of queuing is something called congestion avoidance. One common way of doing congestion avoidance is doing something called random early detection. Whenever you're sending a lot of traffic through the network, you're filling up these buffers. And what random early detection does is as the buffer is filling and it gets to a certain point, it randomly starts dropping packets that have occurred previously that are still stuck in that queue. And those packets simply disappear. What random early detection is hoping is that you will be able to clear out anything that is filling up that queue. And the device on the other side has now recognized that a packet didn't get through and simply request to resend the packet. And hopefully, when that packet is resent, whatever was causing that great congestion has now gone from the network. So as you can tell, not quite as intelligent as you might hope. Another type of congestion avoidance is one called policing. And in this particular case, there's no randomness to it. You're drawing a line in the sand, and you're saying if anything goes above this particular value, simply drop those packets. That way you can be assured that that particular bandwidth will be reserved for other things that need to go across the network. Obviously not the best case either. One that's a little bit more intelligent when it comes to congestion avoidance is one called explicit congestion notification. And in this particular case, devices are communicating to each other, and you're sending a message up upstream to say, you know what, I'm getting a lot of data from you. Could you just slow down a little bit so that I don't get congested on this side? Now obviously, both of those devices have to recognize this congestion avoidance mechanism. But if you have that in place, then perhaps you can avoid having to drop packets later on. If you're using quality of service devices and prioritizing different applications, those QoS devices may not be using all of these different methodologies to control the traffic, but you might have one or more of these available. And if you do, you can be assured that your voice communication, your data communication, and your video will all work nicely and efficiently over your network.